Welcome to Module 3 for IN158 3D Animation 1 at Butler Community College. I'm your instructor, John Simpson. Learning outcomes for this module are for you to gain a deeper understanding of 3ds Max and the tools used for modeling, as well as basic understanding of animation inside of Max. We begin by setting up our file, create a new file, then set up the project folder and save your file. Set the units to generic units, set your auto back options. In the viewport options, set shaded and edged faces. This will allow us to see the segments that make up our model. The first step in modeling is to rough out your object using primitives to create the basic shape. Shapes like the box, cylinder, pyramid, planes, etc. are the basis for most objects. Once created, we manipulate the object's properties in the Modify panel. The first property we are going to look at are segments. Segments control the resolution of the object. The resolution of the object determines the smoothness, deformability, and to an extent the quality of the model. A higher resolution model has more information, therefore it takes more processor, memory, or GPU to render. A balance between quality and resources should always be a concern. In the Create panel, under Standard Primitives, use the keyboard entry method to create a box with the following dimensions. Length 24, width 24, height 96. In the Modify panel, right-click the spinners next to each of the length segments, width segments, and height segments. This will reset them all to 1. Right-clicking any spinners will reset them to the lowest value for that property. In the Create panel, select Box and create a new box using the click and drag method in the Perspective viewport. In the Modify panel, change the length, width, and height to match the previous box. This time, set the height segments to 12. Modifiers are non-destructive tools that allow us to refine our shape further. The number of segments an object has greatly influences how the modifier will affect the object as demonstrated here. Select the first box. In the Modify panel, click the Modify list. Press the T key to jump to the modifiers that begin with the letter T. Choose Taper. Notice that the Taper modifier sits on top of the box in what is called the Modifier Stack. Max looks at the bottom object, in this case the box, then moves up the stack to read the modifiers in order as we have applied them. To access the properties of the mod Taper modifier, we need to select it in the stack. Once selected, the properties in the Modify panel now show the options for the taper. Change the amount and the curve to see how it affects the box. Now do the same for the second box. The box with much higher resolution is much more deformed by the modifier. Additionally, you can change the axis that is affected. Modifiers have sub-objects as well as properties that change how the modifier affects the shape. To access these sub-objects, click the plus sign next to the modifier in the stack. Once selected, the gizmo or center can be manipulated in the 3D viewport. Different modifiers have different properties and options. As always, I encourage you to spend a lot of time exploring and experimenting with modifiers to learn more. To remove the effects of a modifier, simply delete the modifier by clicking the trash can. Next, we are going to look at the lattice modifier. Start by creating a plane with the dimensions of length 128, width 24. In the modify, set the length segments to 12 and the width segments to 1. From the modifier drop-down list, choose the lattice modifier. Remember, you can press L to go to all the modifiers that start with the letter L. The lattice modifier hides the faces or polygons of the object and gives volume to the edges and vertices. We will discuss these elements, edges, faces, vertices, in depth in future videos in this module. Struts are the edges or segments that we set to 12 earlier. We can control the radius, number of segments, number of sides, and more from here. For now, leave the radius at 2, but increase the number of sides to 12. Tick the box next to Smooth. This increases the resolution of the object 
and gives it a smoother appearance. Joints refer to the vertices. A vertex is a point in space. There is a vertex at the end of each edge. In the Joints panel, change the geodesic base type to ICASO. Set the radius to 4 and the number of segments to 3. Tick the box next to Smooth. Kind of looks like a ladder at this point. We will now apply a twist modifier to the plane. A twist modifier does exactly what it sounds like it will. Twist the object. Click the twist modifier in the modifier stack to access its properties. Choose the Y for the twist axis in the twist panel. Set the angle to 360. Looks good, but not quite right. If we look closely, we can see the joints are being twisted and distorted. This is due to the modifier stack order. Max starts at the base object, in this case the plane, then applies the lattice, then the twist. If we reorder the stack so that the lattice is above the twist, it will apply the twist, then the lattice, and it won't deform the joints. We have created DNA, the fundamental code for life. No, not really, but it looks cool. Use what you learned about rendering in Module 2 and have fun exploring object properties and the magic of modifiers and see what creative shapes you can create.